is Microsoft going to release something so awesome that we can actually have an entire screen in our entire living room? Well, Lumi Room makes that so-called promise, but is it what it's going to crack up to be? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Thanks for being patient for tonight's late start, but you're watching PCM Tech Talk Live. Without an intro. That's bad. That's bad. I disconnected my drive while I was hooking up my... I'm going to get this intro in here at some point tonight. See, this is what happens when I uh, run a few days late or behind. Things get a little crazy here at the office. So, no intro, but we're just going to have to deal with that for now. Thanks for coming out to tonight's live stream. I apologize for the delay. We had some technical difficulties, and apparently Google didn't want me to be able to broadcast tonight, because when I went to actually broadcast it, it spent about five minutes actually preparing my stream for the live broadcast. Things are crazy, crazy around here right now. I'm in the process of doing a startup at work, which means that I wake up at 6 a.m. and I go to bed like never, and then I wake up at 6 a.m. again, which is a lot of fun-ish. But, uh, hey, at least we get to have a lot of fun on the show, because that's why I'm here tonight, Tuesday night, PCM Tech Talk Live. Now, remember, Tech Talk Live is all about you guys, the subscribers and fan base. Feel free to post any questions during tonight's show at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube. That's right. It's very easy to get there, and thankfully, it's very easy to post questions because it's YouTube. Just post them, post them right here in the comment feed. I will see what you guys are talking about, and eventually... I will find out a way to implement you into the show while we're talking. So I'll be like, oh, hey, Spec Yes. Hey, folks, welcome back. How you doing, Spec Yes? Good to have you back with us. Rebel, good to have you back as well. Uh, Caden McHorton, yeah, I'm not getting anything. Oh, no, that's not good. Hopefully he's getting some kind of video. <laughs> Lawrence says, you get your act together. I'm unsubscribing. See, I'll work you guys in the show. He was just kidding, of course. Thank you, Lawrence, for stopping by tonight. And uh, thank you for your infinite patience in the show, taking forever to get started. Let me try a change here, see if I can do this. Did that help? Did that help with the audio at all? I'm sure it did, because it was on studio audio. Now we are officially on studio audio. Hopefully we will get things going. Thanks, Lee. Tom Prokes is playing the harp so that we can actually get things going. Now, PCM Tech Talk Live. It's all about you guys. So make sure you post your questions while we are streaming live straight on my YouTube channel. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe and post any questions you might have. Now remember, Tech Talk Live is revolved around the Tech Talk Live magazine, where we have all of the articles for today's show broadcasted pretty much daily when the show occurs from 9 p.m. Eastern all the way to 9.30 to 10 p.m. Eastern. When is this show again? 9 p.m. Eastern to 10 p.m. Eastern on weekday nights, Monday through Thursday. Today was a special, this week was a special week. But all the articles will be at Flipboard, and all of these articles will be posted in links on the community page and the social networks the day of the show. It will contain all of the news articles discussed within the show, like I said. And if you have any questions or want to learn more about whatever it is we talk about, it will all be there. As always, make sure you join the community, because at the community, you will be able to actually engage in interesting discussion with the community based on maybe the show or whatever might be interested, you might be interested in tech. You can also feel free to post questions there, because these guys are really smart, and they'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So again, like I said, I have the best community, so they're all here, hanging out with me, despite the technical difficulties. You gotta enjoy it. You gotta enjoy it. You gotta have a good time. And we do what we can here. Now, the, the first article I wanted to talk about, like the highlighted article of the episode was this Xbox 720 projector they're talking about. The Illumi Room, essentially, is what it's called. And uh, the nice thing about this Illumi Room is it actually seems practical. I've heard, I've heard some gaming consoles or some interactive uh, videos. I've seen some, like, on the PlayStation. Actually, I think uh, Rebel Do posted a video of one in the community. And it just seems so impractical to implement something like this in reality. Now, the, the great thing about this Illumi Room is I do have a video of it right at the... Uh, 
Well, you know what? Let me just go ahead and post this in the community. I'll post it in the community. But this article is, of course, on the uh, the, the Flipboard uh, magazine. And what's cool about it is it's essentially a small little desktop projector that you'll set on your coffee table X amount of feet or any table X amount of feet from your television. And it'll project to your entire room, expanding your screen experience. So the actual projector is designed to kind of detect where the location of your screen is. And then it can actually make parts of your screen go outside of the screen into your room. Now it goes a little bit further than that because it uses the Kinect sensor to capture the room and know the coloring, the lighting, and things like that that's all in the room so that when it's actually creating this gaming experience, it adjusts the coloring appropriately so that way you can actually get the best possible room experience while you're playing it. It's really kind of a brilliant idea. The question is, is it going to work in practice? Some of the things they had, of course, were like it's snowing. While you're playing a game with snowing, it snows around the screen as well. Uh, or if you're playing like a first-person shooter, this was kind of cool. If an explosion occurred off your screen, it would actually ex occur in your living room on the wall, like right outside your screen. Cool! You know, that's kind of cool stuff. Or they can make it so like there's a grid area of the city you're walking through so you can actually see areas around you or outside of you that uh, aren't on your physical screen so they can kind of create more of an immersive experience with your gaming uh, with your gaming style essentially it's a way of cre expanding your monitor outside of its normal display ranges now this uses a wide range of, a wide range of technology most of which is visual and uh, most of it which is like uh, like that hue I don't know if you guys have heard of the Hue. Hue is essentially a uh, multicolored LED display technology, but it's able to detect the coloring of a room and then kind of match the environment so that it can kind of create an ambiance within the room you're sitting. And uh, obviously it's probably like the Kinect. It's got to be facing your television, though, about six feet away it looks like. I'm looking at a picture of it right now. But six feet away, facing your television, and it's a projector that projects it add-on or expansion of your screen on your television. Now I said that it says will it create this uh, will it create essentially like uh, what's 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 the word I used exactly I used I used a word exactly I want to use it again. illusion it does it use opti it uses optical illusions in order to generate like ripple effects and stuff so like while you're shooting your gun it'll actually vibrate your room <laughs> the objects in your room because it'll actually see your objects in your room on the screen and it'll actually show them while you're in the process of playing the game. And it'll actually show the, the frame of the objects in the room. And it'll actually create an optical illusion like your room's like vibrating or something while you're shooting it. Really cool stuff. Cool idea. I don't know if it'll work in practice. I mean, I've just seen, they got some concept videos here and they weren't, you know, dummied up. And they actually seem like a practical implementation of a technology like this. So this is a, a, a so-called coming out of uh, this project in a Lumi room is coming out. Uh, we don't know when it's coming out, but they're going to be just talking about it on May 21st at the official Xbox 720 show. But uh, this has actually been a project they've been working on for quite some time. And from what I understand, Sony had one at one time. But if you really look at the video, you see that the entire room kind of needs to be modified in order for something like that to, to work. So let's see what we have here and what people are talking about. We got uh, Lawrence says, Craig, you get your act. Oh, he already said unsubscribe. Oh, come on, Lawrence, stick around. <laughs> um, Lawrence Eckert says, first show I've seen where I've watched from the very beginning. Well, welcome back, Lawrence. I appreciate you coming out. Steve, welcome back. Spec, yes, of course, welcome back. Caden says, want to know what's a bummer? Not being able to see all the updated comments on the live stream from mobile. Oh, that is unfortunate. Now, can you reload? He's talking about you, you can watch the YouTube live stream on your actual device from mobile, but... I wonder if you can reload the entire video and see if it'll do the comments. I mean, of course, it won't delay, you know, the video. You might miss some of the video feed, but uh, that's pretty cool stuff anyway. Maybe you can reload it and get that going. Rebel says, love the shirt, Craig. Thanks. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I, uh, I, I, liked, I liked the logo. They did a good job on this. I had to change the color to white because this was a dark burgundy shirt. And you're not supposed to, apparently, you're not supposed to wear white on Cameron. Go fit Cameron. Cameron. On camera, go figure. My cameraman told me this. No, no, no. You don't wear bright colors on camera. Apparently, it takes away from your face and the lighting and the confusion. And he's technical. I don't, I don't argue with him. I assume he's right. And look, he he makes me look good, pretty much. 
as good as I can anyway, right? Right? But I'm not in HD. I mean, you guys HD like, whoa, whoa there. Calm down. I'm glad you like the shirt. Russell says he likes the shirt too. Uh, again, this cost me 30 bucks. I don't have official PCM gear yet. I'd like to do something like that eventually, but uh, I haven't really put anything together for that. But this is more for obviously advertising in the show. So we'll see how that all pans out. Lawrence Eckert says, LOL, Craig. Glad I said something that was funny. I wish I know what it was. Can't even remember. Rebel says, I don't see how Illumini could be ready in time. It would seem that a lot would have to be in place to both ensure there are no health hazards and you would, be, you would think the development of video games would be. Now, that's a very good point. The only way that Illum the Illumi room, I think he called it the Illuminati. No, he just called it the Illu Ill Illu Illuminati. We don't talk about them anymore on the show, right? We 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 don't do that. We don't. We're not allowed to talk about. It. But the uh, Illumi room essentially would kind of create uh, a problem for developers because developers would have to have the technology in house before they can actually expand the game experience beyond your normal screen. And really, is it going to be worth their time? I mean, that was kind of a big concern with Connect. Connect didn't fully get utilized by developers. They kind of just threw stuff in as an adder. So are they really going to go through this trouble to create a, a real experience for this Illumi Room technology? And really, we won't know that until we see how quickly adopted the technology is and how many people purchase it. Because if there's a lot of great games out of the box that come with it that really have feature-rich content to it, and there's a lot of developers behind it, you know, like the big players in, in Xbox come out and say, yeah, Gears is going to support it, yeah, um, all the Call of Duties are going to support it, support it, and they start giving us an actual game list so we can kind of get our expectations in order for this, like, oh, yeah, that might be worth my money, then we'll have a better idea of whether this will be a successful project or not but because as always with something like this it creates a visual illusion experience it's great if people go through the trouble to write games for it but as i've talked about on the show a million times before game cell systems not technology so while the technology might be there what happens if nobody uses it well then it doesn't matter we're not going to go through all the trouble to buy something that we can't even use or there's only one game we sports that we want to play so that's a good point, Rebel. Very good point. Caden says, hmm, I saw a post on Google Plus of someone saying that Sony created something similar to a Lumi Room years ago. In that post, I did, I did say, like I was talking about, Sony worked on something similar to this. Not really practical as far as implementing it for a home user, though. If you look at the Lumi Room compared to the PlayStation model, you'll notice that the PlayStation model's technology seems very unrealistic from an actual, I'm going to buy this and set it up myself type experience. The Illumi Room kind of is like when you're looking at it, it's like, yeah, I can see how that could work. Because what they're doing is they're essentially just using a camera on your Xbox or on your Kinect to grab your room specifications and dimensions. And then they're actually using a projector to kind of modify the image based upon those specifications. So it's more of a realistic adaptation, I think. So I think the 720 has a little bit better of a, the Illumi Room has a little bit more of a selling point as far as that's concerned. I could see it being practical for more users. Whereas I think the Sony one was like a lot more like, okay, yeah, I'd have to have a lot of technology or a lot of space available, or a, it didn't even explain to you exactly how the project was supposed to work, to be honest with you. So we'll see how it goes. Jared B says, Hey, I subscribed and it's my birthday. Can I please have a shout shout out? I think I know who Jared B is, but happy birthday, Jared B. Shout out to you, my friend. Good job. Staying alive for another year. Congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. And don't cry yourself to sleep tonight. I don't know how old you got, but once you get a certain age, you're like, no, it's not my birthday. But if you're still telling people publicly, you're probably not too old. <laughs> That's usually how that works. Um, Caden says, I guess Microsoft did it better than, this, than the Sony. Sony never really released it for a consumer use. So that's kind of one of the reasons. Tom Proke says, I'm sure I can find an empty room in my two-bedroom apartment for the projector. Well, the, they're, they're trying to say that your projector will be small. It can fit on a coffee table. So you don't have to have a dedicated room for it. We'll see how that works out. But... Uh, who knows? Rebel Do says, on the health thing, I'm just saying stuff like you know 3D makes you sick, sitting in the dark room, watching TV, playing games is supposed to be bad. Now, I agree with that to a point, but it really depends on how long Microsoft's been working on this project. I think this date in this article said somewhere around 2011, and uh, so I'm almost positive it was around that time. 
when they first started engineering the project. And there's a couple of videos on here, like I said, so you can kind of see how it builds its system and calibrates itself. It's kind of a cool idea. But um, using mostly shadows. But if they've already kind of gone through all the legalese and come up with a, a disclaimer that can really kind of waive all their liability, I'm sure they'll be ready for release. But I don't know. It, it, it'd be kind of a cool thing that they could release alongside the 720. But they'll, I would guess they're going to wait another year before releasing a whole new thing because they, they like to time release this stuff. Because everyone's going to go out and buy the 720, right? Well, if they go out and buy the 720, but then they're going to, you know, they're going to be broke because they just bought a 720. And so you don't want to throw too much hard, new hardware in the market at the same time. So, I mean, that would just be wise on their part, I think. So, Rebel, uh, Caden says, yes, Rebel, it supposedly is. Um, yes, it's supposed, 3D is supposed to make you sick. I don't think they mentioned anything about 3D. There's no real 3D here. I think it's just an optical illusion thing. So in other words, it's still 2D. It just kind of renders your room in a way or projects to your room in a way where it can make it look like objects shift when they don't. Not saying that it won't make people nauseous, but it probably, <laughs> it probably would. But um, anyways, Lawrence says, when your laptop dies and you miss five minutes of the show, love to have... Have to love, have to love that, have to love that feeling. Well, to be honest with you, I got started ten minutes late in tonight's show because we had, uh, we had first we had Tom playing violins. He was like, nah, 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 you know, and then you know it was really sad faced. If you look at the if you look at the community page, I post I try to post updates, you know, when I'm when I'm having technical difficulties because I'm a one man show here, you know, I'm gonna have technical difficulties, right? Something's not going to work, probably most of the time. And now I'm sitting here like, nah, 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 nah. and thankfully saying some probably unkind words. And <laughs> But eventually we get it up, and you guys stuck around, and I'm all happy. I'm like, oh, there's still one person here. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. There's still a lot of people show up, so it's pretty fun. Rebel says, developers aren't going to want to develop around a peripheral feature unless everyone has it, which in this case, everyone who buys the new Xbox will have a Kinect, but not this projection device. Exactly. That's the question. Is it going to be marketed in a way, and has Microsoft already bundled developers together to make this a good selling point for the device? Because that's the only reason it's going to sell. Because Microsoft is, good at, is really good at this one thing. They're really good at getting developer support. Very good at it. You look at the Xbox compared to the PlayStation and compared to the, the Nintendo even, third-party developer support is light years ahead for the Microsoft and any of the other systems. They got the best collection. They usually get the initial releases. And Sony usually has to pay big money to get the actual guarantee releases on their system. And so, like, it's really quite impressive what Microsoft can pull together on that front. So I, if anybody can kind of market an idea this for, like this, Microsoft can. But let's not forget about the Kinect, okay? The Kinect really, in my opinion, bottomed out. It started out as a gimmick. Continued to, started out as a gimmick with a lot of potential, continued to have a lot of potential, but nobody really tapped into it, even though it sold a ton of copies. A lot of people had them. Even the big name developers really didn't target it for development. So either there was a problem on the development side for Kinect that developers didn't want to touch it, or it just they just didn't see the, the big selling point in it. They didn't see like, okay, if I add spend this time developing this feature for the Kinect, more people will buy my device. You know, they just didn't see that. So, I don't know. I don't know if they'll be able to do that with an Illumia room. I think the technology looks cool. I think it. I think it looks powerful. It's got a lot of potential. But if it doesn't have anybody backing it, it's another piece of good technology just not getting used. Um, Rebel Do says, "All I say, both Sony and Microsoft projection tech gamings are all gimmicks." Case in point, could very well be the case. And on that note, it could be a gimmick. Let's move on into future news today because I don't want to spend too much time just on Microsoft. I know I'm a big gamer. Not everybody in the community is a big gamer, and that's cool because I have the best community on the Internet. We talk about anything tech here and at the community, pcmtechhealth.com forward slash community. Now, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them here, right here, pcmtechhealth.com forward slash YouTube while the show is live. You can post questions right here in the comment feed, and I'll be more than happy to answer them, and we'll talk about them during the show. This isn't a closed group, people. Anybody is welcome. Now, here's an interesting story. 3D printing. If you guys haven't been paying attention to 3D printing, it's kind of a scary and awesome 
technology. Because this 3D printing is essentially a 3D printer scanner can actually scan in a, a device in three dimensions, and then the 3D printer can cut a device or a piece of a device in a three-dimensional form. Now, if you don't understand what this means, essentially you can scan an object such as, oh, I don't know, this object, right? But then you can actually print out an exact replica of this object. And by printing, we mean like laser cutting, okay? And it'll print it out in a nice, thick, durable plastic or whatever material you decide to use. Now, this type of technology is being used uh, for like gun creators or gun manufacturers who are trying to create their own weapons and they're actually to be able to able to create functioning weapons with this technology so you can you can imagine that it's got a lot of accuracy and it's very um, powerful okay well rumor has it not rumor has it but a technology like this is so promising that people start talking about what kind of industries it's going to replace and I can this one kind of stuck out at me it was that 3d printing will transform manufacturing because you think about all the little plastic pieces and parts we have coming out for the millions of applications we have right now, you could actually create mass production printing machines that can actually identify and scan an object for a customer and then print them out in mass quantities, exact dimensions and sizes. The potential for replacing manufacturing firms that do like custom molds and custom dyes, which is a lot of money, okay? I'm in the, I work in the industrial sector. Having custom dyes and all this, the heating and extrusion and all this expenses that come with running these types of machines and maintenance. This technology, if it continues to kind of develop in real sophisticated ways, can potentially create more automated and robotic jobs, which unfortunately, well, I guess somebody still has to operate them. Unfortunately, we'll probably replace some jobs, but interesting thing to pay attention to is this 3D printing technology. I think it's going to be a major player in the coming years because of the potential to tap into many, many different types of applications. So it's kind of interesting to see what they're going to be doing with this next, because I know people were talking about wanting to ban personal 3D printing machines because you can use them to create weapons. Well, you can create weapons with a lot of things. You don't have to have a 3D printer. But the idea is, is you have to have some kind of a, some kind of a, a, what is it, a template or an object to scan or create, and it'll actually replicate that object in the 3D world. Very cool technology, especially if you see it in action. So YouTube 3D printing and take a look at some of the stuff that people are putting together. If you want to see something even more interesting, YouTube 3D printed guns, and you can see these people actually created weapons with this 3D printing technology. And so of course the concern there is they're unregistered or they're not, they don't have serial numbers and there's of course a lot of concerns with that. But either way, the technology itself has a lot of potential. Technology can be used for good or evil, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But uh, it's a very cool, very cool technology. So make sure you guys check that out if you get a chance. I had, I had to bring it up and show 3D printing. I see it in the headlines. I'm like, well, what are they doing now? What are they doing with this next? Because it's really a cool technology. Now in a fun article that somebody else posted on the community. Wait, let's see if you guys have any more comments. Because remember, the show's about you guys, not me. But not about me. Let's talk about me. <laughs> Johnny Bravo's on Netflix, by the way. What do we got here? Lawrence, no, Rebel says developers aren't going to know. We already did that. Um, Caden Me Kihorn says the Kinect was still not a popular household edition though I own one I never really use it why is there even a second attempt well I think their hope is that they'll create something better because there's some things that the Kinect does do well and that's like exercise uh, type workout videos and they have some real fun like arcade games for kids and actually honestly I liked like the ninja ones and stuff like that so there's some games that are fun like the mechanics of it are fun and they, and they work really well like that uh, uh, we know that active what's the name of that that uh, that workout there's a workout one what's it called not Zumba I don't play Zumba right that's weird uh, it's the oh I always forget the name man it's so good too I can't remember the name of it <laughs> but it's incredible because it scans you, it scans your body, and then it, it watches you as you work out and makes sure that you're following the workout routine properly. And I've talked to people who've lost tons of weight using these. And it tracks all of your movements, your calories, it bases on your weight and your height, and it tells you, you know, oh, go down further, stand up straight, you're not doing this right. So you can actually learn a workout routine. It has a whole bunch of different built in exercises. Um, I know it's by Ubisoft. What's it called? Somebody tell me. Somebody remind me. It's awesome. It's really good. It's a really good connect thing. And I and I, I'd like to see them 
come out with more of that kind of stuff, but with like real games, you know, not not really just exercise games. So, so we'll see how that goes. Um, all in favor of the most useless gaming peripherals of 2014 and beyond? <laughs> it may be. It may very well be the most useless peripheral. I don't even know if it's going to come out in 2014. We don't even know. Lauren Eckert says, Technical difficulties are frowned upon in the PCM community. I'm going to have to take this over to the community. Well, make sure you tell the moderator in advance so he knows what posts to delete. I wouldn't do that to you. I'd be like, sad face. That's all I put on there. Rebel Dude says, Craig! Have you heard peeps from Facebook switching to Google Plus? Check out my latest post. Funny that you bring that up, Rebel Do. That's what we call a segue. Facebook loses millions of users as biggest markets peak. That's right. Facebook, I've talked about a number of times on this show. Are they going to stick around forever? Are they going to just hang in there forever and ever and ever and ever? Personally, I think there's always going to be a mark for the market for the biggest social network in history because everybody's on it. You know, you know you got that safety of finding people, right? So there's always going to be some place for Facebook, but is it going to be always the number one social network? Well, the latest numbers have told us that things aren't looking well for their numbers, but things are looking well for their revenues, which kind of emphasizes where Facebook's business plan has been for the past four years. And I've talked about this a number of times on the show as well. Facebook has stopped focusing their attention a long time ago, three, four years maybe, on the end user, the people who are actually using their software, and they've started shifting to a profit margin model, in other words, advertising model. Ways to sneak in ads or just blatantly throw ads at you or get you playing games that have places to spend money. More than actually improving the social experience, they've been trying to improve the bottom line. Granted, they've done that, but not without a cost. And that cost is starting to kick in. Facebook has lost nearly 9 million monthly visitors in the U.S. and 2 million in the United Kingdom. There's a 4% fall. In the U.K., it's 4.5%. And um, Facebook is still growing fast in South America. That's about it. Uh, but we have some interesting numbers here. Uh, so alternative social networks such as Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. I don't even know why they use that in this article. The photo sharing site won 30 million users in 18 months. That means nothing to me. Okay, Instagram does not replace Facebook. Instagram is a photo sharing network. It's a terrible comparison. That's, that's pretty much useless. Um, what else did we have here? We had 36% increase in revenues. I think that's all they had, but uh, the point is they're losing they're losing a user base, a significant number of their user base. And it's very simple why. Their interface sucks, and it sucked for a few years. It used to be awesome, used to be intuitive, used to be user-friendly, and then they started shifting everything around, started changing the timeline, started forcing changes down the throat, adding features, pretty much slapping them on like super glue. You know, like, oh, this would be a great future here. There we go. That one will be just good. We'll stick that one in that corner. We'll stick this one in this corner. Stick this one here. We'll also put a drop-down menu here. And then when we're over here, we'll make sure we put a little a little home screen here because they're going to get lost with all this new stuff. So we better put a new menu up here because if we don't put a new menu up here, they're they're going to get overwhelmed by all the stuff here. So this is like their safety net menu, right? It's top left corner to make them warm and fuzzy because we just got so much going on everywhere now. And uh, <laughs> that's just part of it. Um, they also have the disadvantage of being overpopulated, overpopular, and so the big dog always gets the most criticism. So all these privacy concerns everybody's talking about, all these frustrations of like, oh man, did you, did you see that new update? Oh yeah, it sucked. And so you got all the bad word of mouth when things don't go their way. So you got the typical things that occur when you're a major social media player. And that's pretty much what's going on with Facebook right now. So until they, in my opinion, come up with a way to really resell people on the model, and really give us something fun to work with rather than frustrating and clunky. I've been in IT for years, like 15 now, 15. I, I, I get confused. It's not, it's not, and I talk to people, they're like, I, I have so much trouble finding stuff on Facebook. It's like, it's not just you, it's confusing. Like try, try finding your privacy settings. Try, here you go, try disabling notifications. I mean, really disabling them. Going in there, disabling notifications and having them actually be disabled. Things like this, these, these small little things that are just like impossible to do now, which were at one time actually very easy to do. So I'm, I'm, I don't really know where to go with Facebook other than that. It's just a very, 
very traumatic experience for most Facebook users now. <laughs> Not saying that Facebook's all in all a bad thing. It's still a great way to connect with people, but you got to sift through a lot more junk now. And all it takes is one really big competitor that really makes it really nice to still interact with the same people you like. And a lot of teenagers are running screaming because their parents are on it. You know, there's no way to get away from that. Teenagers will not hang out at the same place as their parents forever. That's that's going to happen on any social network, no matter how fun or not e fun or easy it is to use. So personally, I'm a big fan of Google Plus, but Google Plus is more of a content network than it is a social network. Granted, there's a lot of social elements to it, but a lot of it revolves around articles and videos and media and things like that. Whereas Facebook is really more of a what's your buddy doing, what's your friends doing kind of network than Google Plus is. Now Google Plus Granted, does a decent job with separating, does a great job with separating all these categories and circles, but I just don't have enough friends on Google Plus to make it anything as close as Facebook as far as personal relationship engagement. So I think, I think they still own that market, and they still will for a while, until somebody comes up with something better, and people all flock to it. So Rebel, yes, I have heard people from Facebook are switching to Google Plus. And I think it's a good thing. I'm excited about it. I love Google+. Plus. That's where my community lives. PCMTechHelp.com forward slash community. And it's completely free. And the interface is awesome. It's fun, fun to use. It's fun to find new content. It's fun to share content. It's fun to plus one content. It's fun to talk about stuff. They make it very simple and clean. And that's what I love about Google+. Plus. So check out Google Plus if you haven't yet. If you're looking for a good Facebook alternative, I think it's a good one. The problem is, is if you use Facebook exclusively to connect with friends and family, you're probably not going to get as much out of Google Plus as somebody like me would, who's really just looking to interact with brand new people they've never met before who talk about the same stuff that I talk about. So if you're feeling lonely, join the community, and we'll be more than happy to talk to you because we love it. So Caden. Mechicorn says, we are slowly approaching replacing humans with robots. C-3PO, man. I'll live with it. Tom Proak says, making a gun is what I'd make. Hey, man. Freedom. I think you have to technically register it. I don't know what the rules are, but uh, I think you can buy a 3D printer for around $10,000 right now. Start printing your, mass producing your own weapons. I'm, I'm telling you to do that, okay? People are like, PCM Tech Help, I'm going to be on the news tomorrow, which would be awesome publicity. Like, PCM Tech Help was actively promoting the printing of mass quantities of weapons of mass destruction. And I'll be like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would never recommend that. Nobody do that without proper licensing and arrangement with the proper channels of legal blah, 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 blah. Throw in, throw in legalese here. I'm not a lawyer. Lawyer in Sidecart says, Craig, the only okay game from Connect is Rise of Nightmares, even though I couldn't get past the first level since my room isn't big enough. <laughs> That's a big problem for Connect, and it's one of the most frustrating things. I have a Connect. I got that little lens cover for it that's supposed to kind of retract, you know, and make the room, since I have a small room. That thing's crap. It just does not work at all. Like, you can't even see my feet. Like, my feet disappear on the screen, which is kind of crappy if I'm doing a workout, right, and it's supposed to see my feet move up and down, but my feet are just gone. So, yeah, that's a big problem with Connect. It's very frustrating. Yeah, and that's another problem with the Connect is uh, the interface is clunky sometimes. So, Lawrence Eckert says, what do you think of Facebook Home? I personally think it's a huge fail. No one wants to see profile pictures as a live wallpaper slideshow. I'm sure somebody does. In fact, there's about two out of five people that would say otherwise because I think the store has an active rating of, the app has an active rating of two out of five stars on the store. See, which is a very bad thing. But it did get half a million downloads. But I guess if you see how many people are on Facebook as opposed to how many people are on, you know, Android and how many people would actually actively download this, and probably most of them downloaded it to try it. So if you had half a million downloads and only two out of five people liked it, that means two out of 200 out of 500,000 people actually probably maybe kept it. And then those people kept it for a long time. Maybe they started hating it. Maybe they got used to it. Then they uninstalled it. And so you kind of have a, the numbers kind of dwindle and then it starts to peter off. But really, would they have sold more phones than that? Because really, remember, Facebook Home was just a way for Facebook to get into the mobile hands of Android users without having to sell a separate phone. Like, remember, Mozilla is selling a separate Mozilla Firefox phone, or Mozilla Firefox, Mozilla OS phone. But it's going to be a lot harder to sell people on hardware 
than it is just try our app, which takes over your phone and acts like it is your phone, but just, you know, try it. You know, it's a, it's, it's a lot easier sell, especially if it's free app. You know, people will just try it, just to try it. So I, I think... I think time will tell, but I think as of right now, it's not a huge success. No, I, obviously, it probably has. I haven't used Facebook Home myself yet, but from what I've read, it has the same interface clunkiness and frustrations associated with, guess what, Facebook. It's almost like they don't do any user studies at all. They're like, no, this is what people want, and they will like it because we are Facebook and we are awesome. True. And then they just release something. Ah, let's roll out this update. Well, 90% of the users say they don't like what? I'm sorry, what? Did you ask me a question? I said we're rolling out this update. All right? It's better because I thought of it. That's how Facebook rolls. <clears throat> Tom Proke says Facebook reports to the CIA. Yeah, that doesn't help. All these privacy concerns. And uh, I think one of the head investors is actually involved actively in, um, what is it called, uh, Profiling. So, criminal profiling. Rebel Dew says, LOL, well, half of them are returning to MySpace trying to figure out their old username and password. Caden says, my profile picture is a clown anvil. Oh, clown Avi. A little clown. Awesome. Oh, oh, yeah. He said, just joking. Would be funny to see a homicidal clown pop up on your screensaver. Why not? Mine's that cartoon one now. I got all kinds of uh, comments on that, but the cartoon Craig, like the. The really goofy cartoon Craig. And I love it, actually. I love that avatar. I don't care what you think. It's better, okay? It's better. Because that's what I say, and I'm PCM, and it's better. Okay, it sucks. Leave me alone. Russell says, try to get into MySpace and failed miserably, Rebel. Hey, we've all tried at some point. Actually, MySpace has a new interface and stuff. I heard that. It's like a music video site now or something. I haven't tried it out in a while. Russell says, I think the last time I used MySpace, Dale Earnhardt Sr. was still alive and Dale Earnhardt Jr. was still number eight. Dude, I don't even know what that means. I, wow, what a reference. Uh, 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 yeah, Lawrence says, LOL Craig, you're hilarious. PCM Tech Help is actively promoting gun use. And I have a zoom lens, lens for connect awful, awful, it's awful. That zoom lens is so bad. And no, I do not actively promote gun use. Sorry, I got new contacts today. I do not promote gun use actively. I would never do such a thing. Stinking contact. Rebel Do says, so good. So is that good or bad to Caden? I don't know. I don't know what he's referring to. Anyways, the next story, Facebook. We're done with Facebook. The iPad. It's right here. This device right here. Have you guys heard of this thing? The iPad. People are like talking about it and stuff. It tops JD Power customer satisfaction survey for the second year in a row. But there's a couple things I wanted to touch on this. I was like, oh, iPad is the greatest. It, customer satisfaction. Everybody loves it. It's the greatest tablet in the world. Android sucks, right? Right? That's what that means, right? No, that's not what that means. Because if you look at this study in a little more detail, you see something very interesting here. The Apple approval rating was 836 out of a thousand point scale. Amazon was 829. I'm going to read that again. Apple's approval rating was 836 out of 1,000. Amazon was 82.9. Let's do a little bit of math here. 83.6% approval rating, or uh, let's say uh, positive rating, so a B for the Apple, and an 82.9% for, the, uh, for the, uh, uh, the Amazon. Okay, well, they're like, okay, well, that's the Kindle, right? It's not even anything. It's not even a pad. It's not even a tablet, right? So then we go look at the, it's like, let's just try Samsung, right? Samsung, that's actually an Android device. It's got to be way lower, right? 82.2% as opposed to Apple's 83.6%. We're within 1.5% here between an Android Samsung device and the Apple device. Asus, another Android, right? Asus, it's got to be in the 70s, right? 81.8%. Acer, 78.4%. The only one that actually hits the 70s, which, by the way, is still within 5% of Apple being the top product, tells me something here. And we've talked about this briefly in a previous video. It tells me that all of the tablets are still great for App, Android and Apple. So even though Apple took home the JD Power and Associates 
awesome award and they can show it on all their commercials, customer service satisfaction. It's within 1% of the Amazon and within 2% of the next level of Android. And let's talk about error here. And they don't even really elaborate on here because they don't tell you what the plus or minus percent failure could be. You know, it's like, yeah, sure, you know, you got an 82% here, an 83% here, an 84% here. But if they're all within 3%, you know, what's your margin of error? You know, it's got to be close. It's got to be 1%, 2%. It's got to be close. But uh, nothing, nothing, nothing commented about on this. So this wasn't, this was not a Apple fanboy, even though I love my iPad. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Be careful when you read these reviews and people say, JD Power and Associates, number one approved company. Because then when you look at the approval, the actual details of the study, you realize that, well, they pretty much tied. I mean, at the end of the day, so what do you do? What tablet do you go out and buy? When you have all this information, you're like, oh man, I was gonna go out and buy the JD Power and Associates Consumer Product of the Year pad. Now what am I gonna buy, Craig? You rained on my parade, I'm unsubscribing, I'm never watching this again, and in your intro didn't work, unacceptable. Uh, I've had about enough of this, I'm out of here. Well, calm down, and before you unsubscribe, which is fine, I don't want you here anyway, Go ahead and think about what you're going to use your tablet for. Once you've decided what you want to use your tablet for, you go into Verizon, a Verizon store, or a Best Buy, and you get your grubby little hands on one. That's it. You play with one until you find one you like. And I guarantee you, you will find one you like. There are a lot of great tablets out there right now, the iPad and Android ones. So obviously go in that order. Go. Samsung, then it was Asus, and then uh, Acer, right? And if you want like a reading device, check out the Kindle Fire. Kindle Fire is really, really, really highly reviewed. Everybody loves it. And if you want an iPad, get an iPad. But check them out. See which one you like the best. Because to be honest with you, they both do a lot. And they both can almost do what the other one can do. So it's almost like, it's almost like you have a choice in what you can buy. You don't have to be stuck with an Apple device anymore. Isn't that great? Thank you, Google, wherever you might be, hiding in my office. So shall we see here what you guys think about this? Let's see what we got here. No video on Facebook. Google Plus is the stuff. <laughs> it's the stuff. Oh, man, I can't even say that with straight face. The, the stuff. So I, I love I love uh, I love Google Plus. It's very in enjoyable. Lawrence Eckhart says Google Plus Home. Google make it now. I download the launcher. You will never see Google make a Google Plus Home. You know why? Since Google has no interest in taking over your phone, they already have you already have Android on there. First of all, okay. So it comes by default with Google Search and all their Google ser services, right? Right out of the box, Gmail. All these things come pretty standard. But also, they're not big on taking over an interface like deal but have you tried the Google Plus app it's insanely awesome and on that note we segue into another article on tonight's show which is Google Now which is their nice little note-taking application which I think is quite awesome I don't know if you guys have used this it's completely free it's called Google Now and it comes to iPhone and iPad with a new search app update um, no wait no it's not I'm sorry Google Now is not their search not their, uh, hang on a second, hang on, Google Now. I got it mixed up, I know it, I know I do. I'm thinking of Google Note, I think. Google Now, Google Now. When you have an appointment, Google Now checks traffic so you can know how long it'll take there. Okay, it's an appointment scheduling and tracking software package. It has uh, your ability to manage your day, check your stocks, which, because you know me, I'm like, oh, how's the Dow doing today? Be local. And it tells you all the local events, and it's for iPhone and iPad and Android. But they got a new huge interface update, and guess what? It doesn't take over your phone. Highly reviewed already in the app stores on both iPhone, iPad, and it's also on Android. So check out Google now if you want to help organize your life a little better. And it'll give you an awesome user experience. So that was a good segue. Very good segue. When you ask the question, is, would Google Plus ever come out with the Google Plus Home? No, probably not. Because really, it's better to have apps dedicated to each function rather than take over your entire phone and then have things all over the place. Besides, they already own it. They already own your whole phone. 
Ayub Memel K says, LOL. Glad people are laughing here. Lawrence says, LOL, I'm dying at the wing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Rebel D says, what's an iPad? Okay. I said, there's no stupid questions, but there are a lot of inquisitive idiots. All right, who watches this? Who has been to despair.com? If you haven't been to despair.com, make sure you check it out because that's all. Just check it out. It's awesome. Despair, D E S P A I R.com. Amazing, amazing stuff there. Caden says, obviously, Facebook is good. Ayub says, I, I, is it, am I pronouncing that right? I, 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 you look, I don't know. He prefers Android, though. Lawrence Eckert says, which is fine. I don't want you here anyway. You are slaying it tonight. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Rebel Lou says, I'll use one as a paperweight. Awesome. I, you, no, I, I, we're just going to call you Dave. Dave says, tablet, great, is better for music, vids, email, and all the basics, but high-end gaming? That would be good. There is no good tablet for high-end gaming yet, really because developers haven't been making good high-end games for tablets. Excellent point though, Dave. Appreciate your comments on the show. Now this is a cool article. I liked this article. Does it make sense to buy a PC with a touch screen? Now this is so awesome because this article was so saturated in editorials. Like, like this was just dumb. You know, I went out and bought this thing and it's extra 50 bucks with the touch screen. It's like, whatever, I'll try it. So I went out and bought it. I slapped it on my desk and I'm like, why the heck am I doing this? This is useless. And it's like almost like he had like this bipolar experience while while he was rolling through purchasing a touch screen for his uh, desktop. Personally, I think you can probably go either way with touch screens on the desktop. I think it's a nice add-on. 50 extra bucks, why not? We'll take the touch screen, especially if we're stuck with Windows 8, right? Because then you can swipe through, swipe through your Metro UI. But he was like, yeah, I can swipe through my Metro UI, but whatever. I don't even like the Metro UI. I keep everything on my traditional desktop icons. So really, this article doesn't do a very good job of saying, depending on the user, you might find the touch screen on a PC quite useful. Let's say you like the Metro UI and you just like to be able to navigate it easier. Then this would be a pro for the touch screen. They're like, no, that's dumb. Don't do that. You don't want anything to do with that. Just, it's terrible. It's awful. Not even, doesn't add any value whatsoever to the whole desktop experience. Now, while I might partially agree with this, because I don't think a touch screen really adds much value on a desktop, I think it does add value on those nice little mobile touch screens like, uh, like laptops, because you don't always have a mouse with a laptop, right? With a desktop, you do. Now, here's a big pet peeve I have with these touchscreen laptops, though, these touchscreen desktops, I'm sorry, is that you gotta put your fingers on your computer monitor. Like with a tablet, it's to be expected. It's a tablet device. So you just get used to the fact, but you have to clean off. Dude, my fingers are like, I don't know how they get so greasy. I don't get it, but I end up with like a big smiley face not that I always do the little smiley face swipe, but for some reason I end up with like smiley faces and cuss words and all that like greased into my screen if I do a touch screen. And it's like that on this too. It's like, it's gross. Can you even see, can you see it? It's gross. It's freaking gross. Now, while I might be like, ah, oh, it's a tablet. I got used to it. I still have like OCD. I'm like, get, get, get off, get off, get off. You know, I'm like going crazy with it for about, you know, only like 45, 50 minutes. But once I get that all straightened out, I'm good. But if I was on my desk, Desktop, that would drive me insane. That would be a deal breaker for me. I would never touch my screen. But I'm an old school guy, right? I'm not. I'm not into this. If actually, if people go this close to my screen on my desktop, I'm like, whoa, there, buddy. I barely know you. I just, we just met. I don't. I know you're my mom. Don't know. Don't touch it. And that's. I mean, that's. That's kind of how. People can be like some weird people. Anyways, uh, the touchscreen PC, check out this article. It's a very fun read. I don't know if I'd say that hands down, oh, no, all touchscreen desktops, complete waste of time. I think he's right to a degree. I think that there's not a lot of value added to the touchscreen on a desktop. I think there's some value added to a touchscreen on a laptop. But really, again, it comes down to the user. If you love the Metro UI, you're going to love a touchscreen desktop too because you're going to get to do the – Nice little swipes and interactions with the screen and all that, as well as use your mouse and keyboard. But it's redundant for most users. We don't need a mouse and a touchscreen for most people. So, 
Fun article to read. That was from CNET. Again, this is in PCM Tech Talk Live magazine which is published at the event on Google+, Plus, also at the Google Plus community page, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community, where you can join the greatest community on the internet, PCM Tech Talk Live community. PCM Tech, the greatest community on the internet. What's the name of my community? No, I'm just kidding. It's the one on Google+, Plus. that one. Yes, yes, the one with the nerds, our cartoon face on it. That's That's the one. That's the one you. That's the one you want to join. So let's see. Let's hear from the uh, the the talking heads here. Let's see. They're like, right? You suck. No. Okay. Um, hey, not cool. I have a tablet. Don't utilize it because my S3 is pretty bad arse. Bad. Bleep. Now, if I could do gaming with Guild Wars, I would quit my job and marry my tablet. Hmm. Now, is it too political to say I knew it? It, we, that's what they said. It was a natural progression. Eventually, people would marry objects and horses. That took, I knew it. Is that, is that too, too, too PC? Lawrence Ecker says, yes, I heard about Google Now for iOS. I posted about it. Every post I saw it on Google+. Plus. They should have made it exclusive for Android, though I understand why they put it on there. You know why they put it on there? They want people to get hooked on Google services because Google services work on both devices. And then when they go to buy a new device... You know, they'll go buy a new phone, they'll look at the Samsung Galaxy S4, and they'll look at the uh, iPhone 5 or whatever, and they'll be like, man, but I really like Google Drive. They'll be like, oh, yeah, Google Drive's on there. Like, man, but I really like Google Now. Oh, yeah, Google Now on there. And but So they will be more susceptible because they've used the software that's already on the device. Now, if they go there and they look at the Android device and think they have to relearn all the software, right, then they're not going to want to even touch it because it'll be like, oh, I'm going to have to relearn my mail, I'm after relearn this. So Google's goal is to get as much of their software into our hands as possible. That way when we're going to buy a device, we consider their strongly. We're like, oh well it does have Google Maps on there and I use that on my phone right now. It also has Google Drive and I got that on my iPhone right now and you, you know you can just go on and on and on. So that's why they do it. I think it's a good a good move. Revel says I was joking about the iPad. I don't even remember what we were talking about, Revel. That was like two minutes ago. Caden says just let's just call him Dave. Yeah, that was fun. Lawrence Eckert says, being random here, but Chromebook Pixel, the dumbest idea Google has yet? I'm sorry, but touchscreen laptops are dumb because you can break the screen if you push on it hard enough, and no one will buy a $1,200, I think it's $1,200, laptop that only browses the web. $1,200 is extremely expensive for what the Pixel had capabilities for. I don't know if the Pixel was that expensive. Is it that Google Pixel? Is it really that expensive? Because that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, pulling it up here, pulling it up right in here. Chromebook Pixel, taking me to Google Play. Oh my! Thirteen hundred dollars for that bad boy, <laughs> and it only has, and it, <laughs> and it only has built-in Wi-Fi and thirty-two gigabytes of space. That's awful. That's absolutely awful. Yeah, it's got touchscreen and everything, but whatever. I would, I'd go buy a Windows Eight laptop before I'd buy that. Actually, that's crazy. No, no, I think I think that's insane. Uh, when they released the original Chromebook, which was only around two hundred fifty dollars, boom! Now you got a selling point. Sure, it's not touchscreen, but an internet-only laptop that boots up in ten seconds and gives you the full laptop experience. I'm all about that. That's the actual regular Chromebook. If you look up the Chromebook, but this Chromebook Pixel, that's over the top. I mean, unless you absolutely fell in love with your Chromebook for $250 and you wanted an upgrade in horsepower and things like that, then you'd look at the Chromebook Pixel. But I don't know how many people in the right... I don't know, maybe people would. I, I, it's just such a niche market. I don't even know. I don't even know how people could really go with that. That's crazy. Tom Proke says, oh, you read my commentary. I stalk you. It's my job to stalk my community on a regular basis. Some of you need to brush your teeth, by the way. B Hunter says music production is awesome with touchscreen computers. Really? That's kind of interesting. I never even thought about that. What does like? What does it add to? Just out of curiosity, and I'm, this is a genuine question because I I'm always curious to learn things like this. In what way does music production like? Do you get to adjust the levels easier, or do you get to adjust move the timelines around easier? Like, what what does it improve in your editing experience for music production? Rebel says, "Night, Craig. See you later. Peace." Dave says, what about those new flexible devices of Samsung's? Technology is surprising. I think it's awesome that they're going to release. Well, actually, Samsung did talk about flexible, but 
LG is probably going to release the first official bending phone where they're talking about folding the screen over the side of the phone. That's supposed to hit fourth quarter of this year, and I think it's awesome. I've been waiting for OLED technology to come out forever. If you want to know more about how excited I was about OLED, then you need to run to my previous video where I talked about the first bendable phone. And it sounds awesome. I'm excited to see it. Rebel says, thumbs up this video. He's right. Make sure you guys thumbs up this video because it helps in search result rankings as well as your comments. Those help as well. Remember also share on all your favorite social networks. Comment at the, uh, you know, anywhere we might be posting content at the community or anything. What you guys don't realize, or maybe you do realize that, is every piece of activity that you engage in, even if you like to stay in the background and just thumb something up, every little bit actually helps with search results because it's all taken into account when uh, Google does its indexing. So, good addition there, Rebel. Have yourself a good night. I'm glad to see that. Now, we're running out of time here. I think we have time for one more article, and then we're going to have to roll out of here. And I'm, I'm going to decide which one we're going to do here. Um, eh, that one was all right. There's, a, there's an app that's been released for uh, tracking your children's expenses where you can actually verify after seeing a scanned copy of a receipt a purchase from your kid so in other words if your kid goes out and makes a purchase on their checking account that they have set up or your checking account or whatever they have to actually scan a copy of the receipt to you and then once you approve the receipt then it deposits those funds into their personal checking account so in other words it gets held in like a temporary escrow so like the money gets paid to the vendor immediately but it's it's the receipt sent to you so that you can approve the pay back method so that your funds will be deposited into their check checking account based on the receipt. So I thought that was an interesting uh, idea for an app. Um, this was kind of cool. The pirates failed to trigger copyright alert system. This company intentionally set up a uh, intentionally set up a pirated torrent. In this particular case, it was season three of uh, Game of Thrones, and they let people download it for three weeks in an attempt to actually alert. Um, the Daily Dot did this, attempted to alert Verizon copyright systems so that Verizon would detect it and then send them a notice. But they were actually able to, for three weeks, with no hidden, no privacy, no nothing, this is supposed to be the greatest copyright infringing software out there. And this was on the Pirate Bay, by the way, which is heavily monitored, by the way. Those torrents are heavily monitored by uh, copyright infringement people, so do your best to stay away from there if you can. But they uh, downloaded it for three weeks and then uploaded it. They seeded it, which is obviously the most dangerous thing you can do if you don't want to get caught. And they didn't hide their IP address or nothing, but nothing. Nobody even found them. This was like upon the release of this software. So, so kind of interesting that people are actually trying to test the waters here for this anti-piracy software that's supposedly cutting edge and it didn't catch them. So that was kind of a fun little article. And lastly, free chat apps uh, are finally replacing SMS text messages. So the chatting apps that you might see on your phone or on your Google Plus, I'm sorry, on your phone or your Google Store may actually be replacing, let's see if it actually brought this back up here. Okay, good. May actually be replacing texting. And this is kind of an inevitable, inevitable. this is an inevitable going to be. This is an inevitable consequence of the technology. This is an inevitable consequence. Wow. This is an inevitable consequence of technology advancing beyond texting because texting is overpriced and ridiculous. And so they were doing this awesome test that said that uh, texting revenues were supposed to go up by 50 billion by the next three years. And I don't see it happening. People are going to move away from texting. They're going to move into these messaging apps because messaging apps are taking over social media in a lot of way. So. Kind of interesting. I'm glad to see that the texting market is dying off because texting sucks. It's expensive. It's convenient right now, but it's it's expensive. Lawrence says, I would never buy the Pixel. And oh, you need to brush your teeth. Yeah, that's true. Pixel. Mac Jones says, it's really creepy because I don't actually have time to brush my teeth this morning. I know, Matt. I understand. You were busy this morning. Lawrence Eckert says, you should sub me too, Craig. Desperate much? LOL. There's no such thing as desperate. We're all about desperate here at the PCM Tech Help Show. I am subscribed to your channel, Lawrence. Thank you for reminding me because I know you submitted a video to the website today that I will get posted as soon as I possibly can. Captain Sue says, remind me not to eat spicy food burning at both ends. 
a little bit, it's what we call TMI, Compton Sue. And that's funny that I think that was your first comment of the video tonight. TMI, you said one thing, and it was too much information. So thanks for coming out. We're going to see if this intro works here. Because, uh, try to close out tonight's video. Of course, I appreciate all you guys coming out tonight. I think we had some fun. We had some laughs. It was a good time. Cried a little bit on the inside. But I really appreciate you guys coming out. It's also uh, one of the best things I get to do throughout my day. Now, here's the downside. I am going to be out of town for the next two days. I'm going to a concert tomorrow, and then I will be in Chicago tomorrow night. So I'm not going to be able to do the live show. I know it sucks. Yell at me. I know because I, I wasn't here Monday either. So I've been doing this startup at work. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But I'm going to be out of town for the next two days. So there will not be a live stream. I'm going to do my best to get something out there. But I will be at the community. PCMTechHelp.com forward slash community. Where I have, again, the best community on the internet. And if you haven't joined it yet, I'm sorry for you. Because you're really missing out on a lot of fun. And uh, these live streams usually happen Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. till 10 p.m. Eastern. But unfortunately, it's not officially happening this week like that. But that doesn't mean we're not going to have a ton of them. Because we'll have episode 50. That's right, a milestone. Episode 50 next Monday from the sound of it. And we'll have a lot of fun doing it then. Let's see what we got here at the end. Any more questions before I close out the show? I'm going to try this intro again because I plugged in that drive and maybe we had some luck. But I don't know. Johnston Procast, man. What was I thinking reading people's names? John says, how do you know so much about technology? What do you read and watch? Well, I do read Flipbook quite often. Quite often. I read a lot of Flipbook. This little, this little app here, it's free from the App Store, and it's on Android and iPad. Now, remember, you can subscribe to PCM Tech Talk Live magazine, where I put my favorite stories on here. It's the stories we talk about while we're actually doing the live show. But if you read a lot of these articles, read, 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 read. That's how you learn. Okay, well, that's partially how you, that's half how you learn. Other half is breaking stuff. Just putting your head in it, playing around with it, and just having it not work. I mean, that's mostly how, most how I got my, mostly how I got my experience was through the school of hard knocks. But um, always read, always read. That's one of the biggest things. But I've just paid close attention. I've always been kind of passionate about technology. Anything you're passionate about, you will pay close attention to. Like, for example, I won't remember Dave's name tomorrow, okay? But for some reason, I'll remember exactly how many people dropped out of Facebook. I mean, the numbers. I'll remember the statistics and all that. I'll be able to quote them verbatim. I could, some guy could tell me his name five times in a row. won't remember it. But for, my brain just remembers this stuff for some reason. I don't get it. It's just, it's just there. It's just how, it, how it's always been. Good question. And welcome to the show, John. B Hunter says, touchscreen music production. Check it out on the community page. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that to Beat Hunter. Thank you for sharing that to the community. Lawrence says, thanks, Craig. I'll yell, yell at you in the community. I appreciate getting yelled at. Stop by me, Craig, says Tom Brooks. I'll, I'll say hi. A downside for me is it's 3.16 a.m. at my country. Bad timing for this great episode. Well, Dave, or I, I you, you never told me how to pronounce that, Dave. I appreciate you coming out whenever you can. And if you can't make it, that's quite all right. Remember, we're at the community all the time. So if you want to post comments and participate in discussion at the community, it's not somewhere you have to be at all day long. You can just post them when you're up, and then people respond to it when they're up. So that's another great advantage of, uh, of the community at PCM, techhelp.com forward slash community. And remember, when you're watching a live stream, you post the questions right here at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube, because that's awesome. We can do everything here on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe and thumb up the video if you like it. Let's see if we can do the outro here. Thanks again, guys, for coming out, and have a wonderful evening. I will see you guys on Monday.